don't know if Clark adopted them or the Hitches adopted him. It's some combination of the two. The industry is truly better for it. Nestled in no man's land of the Oklahoma Panhandle, the Hitch family have countless stories spanning their 138 year history in the cattle industry. But one of the more unique ones starts in an unlikely place with a man who grew up knowing nothing about cattle. I grew up in Dallas. I had no agriculture background whatsoever. I went through uh, elementary school, junior high, high school. I got recruited by Texas Tech to run track and got a scholarship to go out there. I got an accounting degree from Tech and ended up going to Dallas to work for Pete Marwick Mitchell, which was the largest accounting firm in the world at the time. But after a year at Pete Marwick, I discovered I really probably needed a law degree, even if I was gonna stay with that accounting firm. The partner in charge of the firm had a law degree. The two partners in the tax division had a law degree. I said, I need a law degree. That decision led Clark back to Dallas in one of the more time-honored ways of entering the business, marrying the rancher's daughter. I was doing the books while in law school for Peggy Taylor Talent. That was one of the talent agencies in Dallas. Peggy Taylor did uh, movies, TV, shows and stuff like that. I didn't know anyone when I moved to Dallas. A young man who was a law student uh, working for my agency asked me out. I said, well, yeah, he looks nice enough. I'll go, <laughs> we'll go out. It wasn't until after he got out of law school that he really started working with us. It was two or three years. Our family's from Tennessee and after the Civil War. Our great-great-grandfather left Tennessee. We've been here for a hundred and, I don't know, 40, almost 40 years. And you know, we're, we're one of the oldest continuously family-operated ranches in the area and also feedlots. So I'm fifth generation. We've just sort of been here and grown and also morphed some into where we are now. We were the first ones to use high moisture corn, a way of storing and then feeding that. Uh, they did the first circular irrigation systems out here. I would have to say the irrigation is probably top of the line. That was a huge deal when they put it in in the late 40s. They had gas, natural gas, from the wells, and they had wells for water, but until the 40s, they hadn't really combined the two. They just hadn't thought about how that would all fit together. Some of those large sprinkler systems were starting to come into existence. I grew up in the cattle industry and agriculture, and the Hitch family is, is iconic. Despite not being like anything he'd experienced before, Clark threw himself into helping the family business, using his legal and accounting background to advance the ranch in ways they'd never imagined. But to do that, he'd have to learn how the business worked. And that was where Paul Hitch came in. As my brother-in-law, he was uh, the one kind of helping me get into the industry. And Paul kind of took me in as his little brother. and. Uh, and helped me understand agriculture. He got a, a degree at Oklahoma State in Ag Eco, but then he went to Stanford and got an MBA at Stanford. And all of his classmates at Stanford were amazed that he would take the time to get an MBA from Stanford and then come back and run a ranch. And he said, well, you know, we're not involved in agriculture, we're involved in agribusiness. After law school, my job sorta of was to help get customers for the feedlots. Uh, Paul was operations. Uh, Lad obviously ran the whole thing, but uh, my job was to see if we could get people to feed cattle. Uh, a feed yard makes money, it's just like a hotel. You, you get paid to feed the cattle every day, and um, the more occupancy you have, the better the feedlot does business-wise. I created a lot of uh, limited partnerships for investors to form an entity, feed cattle with Hitch. We did a lot of investment feeding. So, you know, we were feeding for people for tax reasons and other things, and it was an investment program product. And I know Clark was heavily involved because of the legalities and the accounting side of that. But for Paul and Jane's father, Lad, it wasn't enough to be in an industry. You needed to volunteer your time to help lead it a trait he instilled in Clark. Our granddad especially was a huge believer in being involved. Um, his 
His thought was, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. The people that show up for meetings, they, they make the rules. And so if you're not present, somebody else made the rule, and you gotta live with it. Well, I think Jane's dad was the one who said, you know, you need to be involved in all these different organizations. It's helpful to the Hitch, Hitch Enterprises. It, it's helpful to the image of feeding cattle with Hitch if Clark Willingham is you know, on the board. Another significant event is Clark's leadership and role uh, during the creation of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association when National Cattlemen's Association was merged with the National Livestock and Meat Board to create a much more efficient and a more powerful organization, a multifaceted organization that could address not only beef production issues and challenges, but beef marketing, promotion, and, and merchandising. The legacy of Paul Hitch to the cattle industry cannot be overstated, but neither can the legacy of Paul Hitch, the man. He had an incredible sense of humor, and he had a knack for using that humor at, uh, at the most appropriate times. When we had the merger vote, it, was, uh, it wasn't a slam dunk that we were gonna have a merger. And it was debate after debate after debate. And finally, Paul stood up and said, in the immortal words of Pogo, them that shows up win, let's vote. And he sat down and we voted and had the merger. He loved to play the guitar. He was good at the guitar and he would sing, play the guitar, and, and one of his favorite uh, songs was Scotch and Soda, Jigger of Gin. Uh, and there's a shop at North Park Shopping Mall in Dallas that's called Scotch and Soda. Every time I go by, <laughs> I think of my brother. At the end of his career, Lou Gehrig stood before a packed crowd in Yankee Stadium and said, Today I'm the luckiest man in the world. I always thought that was odd. I thought Lou Gehrig was insane. I said, What are you talking about? You've got this terrible disease. Today I know that Lou Gehrig was the luckiest man in the world because today I am the luckiest man in the world because I have you. You make me the luckiest man in the world. And I thank you for it. The enduring legacy of Clark Willingham and Paul Hitch and the, and the Hitch family. They are servant leaders. I have never seen a family as able to set aside their self-interest and do what's best for the industry. Perhaps even at a cost to their business. They epitomize the ability to do that. We are pleased to announce Clark Willingham as the 44th winner of the Golden Spur Award.